Good evening, everyone. Time for another member update. Now, this is the weekly chart of silver and the Dow crossed. And so you can see it goes all the way back to 1996. You can see back here in 98 the Buffett buy with uh, silver and then the price going down, the beginning of the bull market, all that. So the things that I've marked out here are a couple of lines to mark out a range. Now the first range that I marked out is the big divergence that we saw between what I will term paper assets versus real assets. So at the top here of the stock market back in 2007 at the beginning of the financial crisis, if you'll remember, the official declaration of the recession was roughly in December of 2007. And then of course we had the Bear Stearns crisis here in 2008. But here's the big divergence point here. There's a high in stocks and a low in silver. So you can see that uh, you count these spaces out here, it comes to roughly 16. Now, if you look where we currently are, you've got a high again in stocks and a low in silver. It actually comes out to about 19. So this is actually larger than that last one. And you can see what happened. What happened was stocks started down and then silver had a huge crash. Stocks followed silver. So what's going to happen here? Well, silver's already started down now and uh, stocks may be rolling over, we're not sure, but this space here is bigger than anything we've seen before. This is the Fed and their minions and all of the rest of the governments around the world and the BIS and all the rest of them doing everything they can possibly do to pump up paper assets and suppress real assets this is going to reverse. I can't tell you when, but it's going to reverse. And when it does, it's going to reverse something similar to this violent reversal here, where you saw them both go down. But I believe that this time, it's not going to have both of them go down. Now, how low can silver go? Can silver go to 10? Well, I suppose. If you remember here, when silver went down to 8, I pointed out before that I watched the physical price and it never went below 16 so yeah they can put a paper price down to 10 maybe even 5 but you're not going to get silver for that price so it's not something to worry about but it does indicate that a reversal of this trend is coming now, I've called this in many places and I was wrong I thought it was happening here I thought it was happening in many other different places but it's gonna happen it just hasn't happened yet so why are they pushing it off so far, well, we've already covered that a lot. But let's look at some of the news stories here because I think that we're looking at tremors of something that's coming. Let's start off with Bill Gross. Now, Bill Gross leaves PIMCO. And PIMCO is the biggest, some people call it PIMCO, but it's the biggest bond fund out there. It's the number one. I think Bill Gross has a worth, net worth of about $2 billion or something like that. So let's read some of this. This is, you have to read between the lines. Something's happening here. William H. Gross appears to have jumped ship before it could be pushed out at PIMCO, the big money management firm that helped, he helped build from scratch. The decision on Friday by Mr. Gross, who has been called the Bond King, to quit the firm he founded and joined Janus Capital comes after weeks of behind-the-scenes discussions to replace him. A person briefed on the matter but not authorized to discuss the matter publicly said a decision had been made at PIMCO for Mr. Gross to leave or be forced out. Um, over the last several months, Mr. Gross has threatened to resign from PIMCO. A person briefed on the matter said Mr. Gross's recent behavior, and it goes into whatever stuff he did. In the last few weeks, Mr. Gross is estimated to be worth $2.3 billion dollars began reaching out to other mutual fund companies, including Double Line Capital, etc. The surprising departure comes after months of questions about his leadership style and his fund's performance as investors pulled out money from PIMCO. Now, if you remember 
Gross has done some strange stuff. Now, there's no question that this guy is under severe threat um, because they're just right there involved with the Fed money printing scheme. And words that this man speaks could spell disaster for the Fed Ponzi scheme. And it is a gigantic Ponzi scheme, and, and uh, PIMCO is right there in the center of it. So uh, this means something really, really big, and I'm sure we're going to find out later. Now, let's look at this article from Zero Hedge. This is about the public pension funds. Now, I've said this for the longest time, and it, you have these people on the left. They're, they were called in the communist countries useful idiots. And the useful idiots on the left are people who support the left-wing rise to power, the rise to power of left-wing dictators or totalitarians. And then, of course, as soon as the dictator rises to power and has complete control, they're quickly dispatched. They're useful idiots. They're useful on the way up, but they need to be dispatched um, when control is taken completely. These public pension funds are useful idiots they're going to be dispatched um, as soon as it is in the interest of the people who are running things to get rid of them. And of course, I've said for the longest time, these are going to be the people that are rioting in the streets. Everybody tells you that hey, it's the Tea Party and the, the conservatives and the libertarians are going to be rioting in the streets. No, libertarians don't riot in the streets. They just leave. And uh, we've seen that with the... Um, numbers of people renouncing their citizenship the libertarians go galt and they just leave they don't try to overthrow the government the people that are going to be rioting are going to be the public employees and that's going to be when they're told that their pensions are gone now the numbers here are so shocking and i've covered this so many times but it's so shocking let's read this Despite the robust investment return since 2004, annual growth in unfunded pension liabilities has outstripped these returns. Moody's warns in its latest report on the state of public pension systems, as Bloomberg reports, the 25 biggest systems by assets averaged a 7.45% return from 2004 to 2013. Now you'd have to say that is a fantastic return. Uh, I don't think they really got that unless they were all the way in stocks, flipped to bonds during the crash and came back to stocks in 2009. But this is what they're reporting. A 7.5% return for nearly 10 years is phenomenal. But uh, you can see here, that's not enough. But liabilities have tripled over the same time period, leaving them facing a $2 trillion shortfall as investment returns can't keep up with ballooning obligations. The top 25 account, uh, funds account for more for 40% of the entire U.S. public pension system with Illinois, Kentucky, Connecticut, and Louisiana at the top of the most underfunded list. As Bloomberg reports, the 25 largest U.S public pension funds face about $2 trillion in unfunded liabilities, showing that investment returns can't keep up with ballooning obligations. The 25 biggest systems by assets averaged a 7.45% return from 2004 to 2013. And so here's a list. You can see that list, Illinois, Kentucky, Connecticut. So that's absolutely insane. If you think about that, that they actually showed those returns. This is this is during this market. Okay, so this this market that basically has been propped up since Obama entered office has been a non-stop bull market. So it's pretty clear that using stocks and bonds, these pension funds have been able to achieve phenomenal returns, returns that normally aren't anything that you can get. But even though they've done that, they're still racking up huge deficits. What's going to happen when this thing goes into reverse? Well, we know what's going to happen. The entire Ponzi scheme is going to collapse. And I wanted to use that to segue into this latest controversy 
This is the controversy that's been going on between Jim Willie and Gary North. And this goes into a debate about Murray Rothbard. Uh, Jim Willie and Gary North have been trading barbs back and forth for quite some time. Um, it's a very complex and deep subject where they're talking about the governors of the various Federal Reserve banks, how they buy their assets, how they uh, reserve things, and, and what type of interest rates they get, and how the system is put together. I'm not going to go into the specifics of this, but I will say that as far as I'm concerned, Gary North is a zero and Jim Willie is a one. And the reason I'm going to say that is because I will trust a pagan, honest person. That That's what I think Jim Willie is. He's not really secret about the fact that he's not a Christian or a believer, that he believes in going to um, countries with very cheap living standards and hiring women, etc. He's not any uh, saint, certainly. But Gary North claims to be a saint. Gary North claims to be a Christian. So instead of going into the argument here, which I think is a whole lot of nonsense, because Gary North is trying to argue that Murray Rothbard's system that the Fed follows is legitimate, and Jim Willie's relying on his sources, um, you, you you can't find anything in the traditional system for the Federal Reserve that explains how the Fed gives trillions of dollars to the Europeans or how all of a sudden we've got hundreds of billions of dollars of buying volume coming out of Belgium. So I definitely tend to side with Jim Woolley on this, although I don't even really care to investigate some of the most arcane and intricate arguments of this uh, bond buying scheme. But instead, let's take a look at Gary North and who he is. So Gary North, if you're not familiar with it, is a Christian reconstructionist. Now, for those of you who aren't familiar with this philosophy, these are people who interpret the Bible as something that tells us that we need to institute a government that enforces the laws of the Old Testament on everyone on earth and that the way that biblical prophecy will be fulfilled is that the Christians or the Christian reconstructionists or the dominionists will take over the world and they will force the world to obey these laws in the Old Testament. Of course, if, if you're a Christian, you know that uh, none of that is in place. That's for Israel. It's not for the Gentiles. This is about believing in Jesus Christ. So what is Gary North doing and who is he? Let's read a little bit of this to understand. Rusas Rashduni, son-in-law, is Gary North a libertarian economist and president of the Institute for Christian Economics. Gary North was and probably still is governor of the Council for National Policy. Keep that in mind because this is the conservative Bilderbergers. This is the Conservatives' Council on Foreign Relations, and we'll see that when we look at the list here. North was also a senior staff member of the Foundation for Economic Education, which was founded which founded the Mount Pelerin Society, a contributor of FEE's journal, The Free Man. In 1976, Gary North was a research assistant for Congressman Ron Paul. So there's some red flags for you. And it goes into the theology. Like all aspects of Reconstructionist theology, these two perspectives have real-world consequences. When translated into theology, Gary North's focus on the future role of the church led him to embrace a more active political agenda. So that's what you have to keep in mind here. This is the wing of Christianity that believes, if you remember the moral majority, all these people, they believe that something can be achieved f through politics to actually advance Christianity. Now we know that that's not the case. 
uh, from what Jesus said that my kingdom is not of this earth. If, if it were, then my servants would fight. So these people have an agenda and their agenda is to take over the world. So this is the right wing mirror image of the left wing Bilderbergers here. And you can see this is not a small group of people here. This is the Council for National Policy. And here we have the members here. We have Don Nichols, David Noble, Grover Norquist, Dr. Gary North, Lieutenant Colonel Oliver North. So I'll just rehearse the alleged issues with Oliver North. Is alleged that he was involved with gun running and drug running uh, up to uh, through uh, Nicaragua and up into Bill Clinton's um, drug infested state um, during the 90s. Some of these others, Howard Phillips, here's your tax guy. You're going to notice that a lot of these are Jesuits. A lot of these are Catholics. And that's uh, something that you'll see on the right a lot of times. Larry Pratt, here's your gun guy. You've got um, Ed Prince. Pat Robertson. James Robeson. Now, James Robeson is a pastor. I don't know if you've seen him. But uh, this is a person that even unbelievers watch the silly antics of this person. He gives Christ a bad name. 